Welcome to my new video. This is Vico. I'm going to teach you how to prep your board for the Jason's Customs VLX Easy Mod for your Brook UFB. Uh, this is the board that comes with the kit by itself. This is the helper board. Uh, you'll see that it's got some headers already on there and they're labeled. This one's for turbo, the switch, USB cable, etc. This is all ready to go. You don't need to do any soldering to this. All we're going to do is swap the stock VLX board for this board, and then we're going to put the UFB directly on top of it using these headers, and then we're going to plug cables from the UFB into here, and then this is going to go back where the VLX board came from. So here's our UFB. You can see it's got some solder spots. It's got the 1 through 20 connector. This is for the LS and DP switch. RS is not going to be used because of the way the VLX handles switching of the directions. So you're typically not going to use RS anyway, so that's not really a loss. This is for the touchpad tracking. Uh, this, I don't know if it's been implemented yet with the new firmware that supports 3.50, but that will be featured later and available later from Brook. These are your player LEDs. This is for your touchpad button and L3 R3. This down here is for turbo and this is your USB. So first things first, let's see what comes in the bag for the helper board. Okay, so what we have now is we have some little JST cables some JST headers, the 20 pin connector, some screws, some standoffs, and some washers. So we'll just set those out of the way. We don't need those yet. Then we have some more headers. So like I said, the way that this works is it's going to plug into the helper board like this. Sorry about the lighting. I didn't want to use the uh, I didn't want to use the lights in my garage anymore because they hummed so I just want to see what happens here so um, we're not going to plug directly onto there because it's too short there's really not going to be much room to solder or no clearance or anything like that so we're going to take these headers and we're going to put them right on the UFB now there's a couple ways you could do this personally I soldered mine on the bottom and they face in but that might be a little bit too weird to uh, manipulate the wires or the cables that were supplied so we're just gonna put them on top just like how Jason suggested so let me see if I can move this light so it's not directly on where I need to solder there we go so here's a five pin header that's gonna go there okay um, this is going to go on the bottom, so we'll leave that separate. We're just going to do the ones on top because those are easy right now. We got the four pin connector, which is going to go here. Yeah, it's going to go here. My bad. So this goes like that. I thought that was in the shot. <laughs> Anyway, that's the four pin connector for there. Here's another five pin. That's gonna go here. And this one and these two going through the bottom. So let's do those last. So right now we've got our three headers. Oh, this one faces out too, my bad. Uh, three, we got our three JST headers ready to go. Soldering iron ready. Now if you're afraid of soldering, if you're not very good at soldering, then you can get the kit that's pre-assembled from Arcade Shock. <clears throat> Let me move this light again. Sorry. Oh, now we're working in the dark. All right, we'll see what happens. So here's our five pins. What I'm doing is I'm just feeding the solder in to the iron. It's going to go right where, right where I want it to go. 
I use a really wide tip, so if you're using something from like Radio Shack or whatever, I think you'll have a thinner tip so you won't need to be as awkward as I would. Or maybe you got a really nice iron and you're um you already you're already equipped with a a thin tip. Second header, this is the four pin. All if you connect any of these um any of these pins together, you can just take a exacto knife or a thin screwdriver or something like that and just um use it to cut through the solder while the iron is hot. You don't gotta get too crazy. Shouldn't need well, I guess at the worst you need a braid, but shouldn't need to get a desoldering pump or anything like that. So there's our there's our five pin headers and our four pin header. So now we have to do these connectors that go on the bottom. So let's put the connectors in from the bottom. Sorry, I don't know what I'm doing right now. This one goes here. This is for the inputs. That's your four punches, four kicks, start, select, home, and um, directions well as your power and ground. This is for your USB and this is for LSRS DP. Like I said, oops, like I said, RS is not supported so don't be disappointed. Maybe a future update will include that. Maybe an add-on or something like that, who knows. So Okay, you can see I'm having some trouble keeping the 20 pin in. So what I'm going to do is, if you have a helping hand or anything like that, or somebody to help you solder it on, you can do that too. But what I'm going to do now, oops, what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to do one at a time. And if you want to do all at once, here's a neat little trick. What you can do is just, just solder one pin in. Sure, it's nice and flat too, so there we go. You see it shifted. Oh, it came out. Damn it. Difficult. I can fix this. I should have to fix this though the G way. So I'm just gonna heat it from the bottom. Be careful not to melt your plastic either. So you see I got some solder coming out. Some extra solder will just clear that off. That got on these little touch points here, but as long as they're not touching, we'll be okay. See my header's on now. Just give it some more solder. Right on, drop it. So we're good. So now that's the one four pin. Now let's do the 20. A little pressure on the board so that all the pins are flat on the plastic below. So there we got those two on now. Now let's do our last four pin. Oh, this one's a little crooked. So we're gonna do it like we did before. 
apply pressure from the bottom, heat it up, you'll see that it snapped into place. So now we're good. So now these connectors aren't going anywhere, so we can freely solder these on. Oh, my tip's getting really dirty. There we go. on this one that's okay we'll just wipe it off like I said if you have too much solder it's really easy to take off and um, pretty much just as long as they're not touching other pins you should be okay so these might be a little hard especially if you're not really used to soldering but just go slow and be patient you should be okay Just want to make a little dome over the pin. You'll see the solder is silver and the pins are gold, so just try and hide the gold. If you want to think about it like that. Let's look at what we've done. Got the charging pin connector on. LSRSDP, USB, and these other headers too. Oh, there's a lot of solder on this ground. Yeah, we're okay. So that's it. That's the extent. Sorry. That's the extent of soldering now. Um, so now what we're going to do is we're going to. Um, what are we going to do? We're going to prep this board now so that it can accept the UFB. What we'll do is we'll get our standoffs. We'll get two washers. Two screws. So the, like I said, the way this works is this plugs in on top like this. So... We need to screw the standoffs in from the bottom. Just hold this with my thumb. I'm just going to screw this in a little bit. See? Just give it a little hand tighten. Just, oh, you know what? I didn't use the damn washers. Because these are such small screws, but if you're a stickler or if you just don't want anything to go to waste, then by all means use them. Both of these stand-ups or standoffs are the same, so it doesn't matter which side you use. The screws are all the same thread and the same height and everything, so if you mix them up, it doesn't matter. So I'm going to use a screwdriver. Here it is. A little tight. You don't got to be too tight. Like I said, these aren't going anywhere. These aren't really moving parts. So they just got to be in there to let your UFB screw in, and that's that. So 
we can prep this right now, but I'm going to leave it open just so you can see how the VLX, um, how it goes into the little box. So what I've done here is I've taken off the turbo panel to my VLX because I'm actually switching out sides. Uh, I had a customer at NCR who was nice enough to send me his. And I don't have his name at the moment, but I'll get it right now. Shout out to Josh for giving me these sides. I'll post a picture later, show you what my VLX can do when I'm all done. So anyway, this is what your VLX is going to look like on the inside. I'm sure you all know how to get into your VLX. So basically, inside that, you're going to have two screws which hold the PCB box in place. So unscrew those and you can move around your box now. So now what we have on the back of your VLX PCB is you're going to have these four wires, these four ribbons. So, or, oops. Let me do this. All right, so uh, you could try to pull these out and be uh, brave if you want, but you could risk pulling the uh, the pins out or the, the, the wires out of the pins. So we're just going to do the safe way and we're going to open up the box and unplug them that way. So here's my warranty sticker. You can just cut that if you want or cut or screw straight through it. You're not going to use this top anymore. This top is not going to cover the UFB. It's pretty much we're only going to use the bottom now. So if you want to save this, cool. If you want to throw it away, whatever. You don't need these four screws either, so you can toss those. And like I said, don't worry about voiding your warranty. You wouldn't be purchasing the parts or watching this video if you really cared about your warranty. You're interested in one thing, universal compatibility, am I right? Okay, so here's our PCB box on the inside. Now you're going to have these two ribbons. This one, which is for the touchpad, this is very, you have to be very careful with this. And this is my USB. So let's unplug the USB. It might have a little glue on it. Since I'm reusing this, I already took the glue off, but basically you can just pry it off just like this. Just get behind it and pull it off. Again, you don't want to pull from the cable because you you might pull them out of the pin so try to get as close to the the connector as you can once you start to see a little gap right there if you're having a hard time you can just put a screwdriver in and help push it out again don't pull from here pull from really close and like I said just kind of wiggle it see I'm not even using that much strength just wiggling in there now I have a little gap Boom. Okay, so this right here, this is called a ZIF, oops. This is called the ZIF connector, Z-I-F, zero insertion force. This is held on by a little cap, which we're just gonna gently nudge. One of these before a long time ago, so now I know to give it some real respect. So see, there we go, you just wanna lift it. This doesn't come out. I mean, it does, but we don't need it to come out. So now just pull that out, and we're done. So now what we need to do is take the... Oh, and then also you're going to have your wires plugged in here. So those just pop out like this. This is your, your button and joystick harness. So just open these little wings right here, pull the harness out, and we're good to go. So now... What we need to do is we need to take off these four corner screws.
my screw fell in there. There we go. Now, like I said, these four screws, actually these six screws you're gonna need to keep. So don't lose them. Like I've said in other videos, if you have a little cup or something you wanna put them in, a little baggie, whatever, just keep them, uh, keep them safe because you need them. So I'm not going far, so I'm just gonna keep them right there. You should be able to see them the whole time. This freaking light. I think it just made it worse. Okay, so. Yeah, I'm not a director by any means, so excuse me. Let's do this. All right. The reason I'm using this little flexi light right now is because I'm modding in my dining room and my dining room light is just way too bright. There's just all kinds of glare. So I think I'll just go with this spooky, spooky light right now. So like I said, we're taking out the four corner wire, the four corner screws, and then we also need to take out these two screws that are holding in the PCB through the harness connector. And those are longer screws. Again, those are the same two, the four are all the same. So you don't need to worry about mixing them up. So now we have the empty box bottom. And you can see it is oriented a certain way. This is where our connector goes, so that's exactly how we're going to place our Jason board. Just going to put it in there, make sure it sits flat, make sure all the screw holes line up, and then we're going to screw it in. Now if you want to plug in all your wires first, you can do that, or you can do like me and just screw them in, or just plug them in when you're done screwing everything in. Now again, you could do this part first because there's no prep needed for this board really. You're just plugging it in. In future videos, if it's dark, oops, if it's dark like this, just know that I'm kind of a night owl. I don't really like to do stuff during the day. In fact, I mostly do all my modding on the weekends, so if you're a customer of mine or you're just curious what my habits are, that's usually what's up. I'm on uh, at night on the weekends. I'm a homebody, I don't go out, I don't party. No kids. There's a girlfriend and two dogs. Shout out to Digital. I'm sure you can. He's probably not going to do this. He's probably just going to buy the board and have it all done for him. No shame in that, but you know. All right, so now we're going to plug everything in. So we got our, what is this? This is a five, so this goes here. Well, these only plug in one way. So if you plug it in backwards, you see you're going to have a hard time. So just look for the little notches, plug it in. Be careful because these pins will flex. So if you need to hold it down while you plug it in, then do that. So there we go. We got our, got our cables plugged in. So now we're going to plug them into the Jason board, the Easy Mod board. Again, be careful so you don't lift the pins, bend the header while you're plugging it in. And plug, plug, plug. There's another one. And then now here's the money shot is we're just going to place this. Make sure your wires are out of the way. We need to line up the 20 pin and the two 4 pin connectors. And they're just going to sit and plug right into the ones below them. is I'm moving all my wires. If you can see through there, I'm just moving everything so that the wires are out of the way, the cables are out of the way. Get it nice and lined up. And if you want to like wiggle while you're doing this and see that it goes in, 
and that looks good. So we got our 20, our two fours. We want to look and make sure everything looks good from the back. Get a little booty shot. Okay, now. Yep, that's it. That is it. So, like I said, this this is how it's going to look. You can push these wires in a little more just to kind of hide them, tidy it up. The way I did mine, like I said, is... I don't have it. It's already installed. But what I did was, instead of putting the connectors facing out, is you can flip the board over and reverse the pin so they'll be facing in this way. So instead of facing that way, you flip it and point them this way. So the way mine is, everything is, you pretty much have nothing on top. Everything's on the bottom, looks hidden, I think it looks better. So it's up to you. Um, this was made for ease, not really for aesthetics as you could see, but um, I mean it gets the job done and that's really, that's really what it's all about. So now, what we're going to do is we're just going to put in our last screws. Sorry, I had a dog hair. That's what happens when you have an American Eskimo. Just going to put our washers in. We're going to screw down our UFB. Again, you don't really need these, but he gave them to me, so why not? See, it's kind of crooked right now. Screw this in. Like I said, be gentle. You really don't need to ratchet this down because this does not move. This is gonna stay in your stick not going to go anywhere and there should be no wiggle room anyway this is pretty solid being that it's got a lot of connectors holding it in as well as um, all the screws God, freaking dog hair everywhere <sighs> that's down oh you know what it is it's not plugged in all the way because of this huge solder blob right there where my USB is so um, you can see right here the USB kind of has a little gap, the four pin right there, that's fine. The pins are making contact. If you have a situation like this where your USB just has massive blobs on there, you can kind of desolder that. Uh, it's not a big deal though, like I said, you can, it, it's there, don't worry about it. This isn't gonna lift while you're playing, and even then, it's still connected. So as long as we have contact between the USB and if you really want to, you can use a multimeter to make sure there's continuity between these pins and these pins. Uh, even if there's a slight gap or anything. So we're not going to worry about it. So now, it's just a matter of plugging everything back in. And putting it into your VLX and playing. Um, as of today, which I don't know when this video is going to be updated, but as of today... Um, April, geez, what's today, 10th? No, today's the 7th, I'm sorry. Um, there was a PS4 update, so make sure you update your UFB when you get it. Uh, always update it um, as soon as you install it into your stick. That way you don't begin playing and then get, uh, you know, you know, you don't ruin your fun when your, uh, your stick times out. If you're not playing on PS4 primarily, I guess that's not a problem. But the updates always have nice little features and oops, nice little features and bug fixes anyway. So let me use a small screwdriver. These connectors are very see that kind of almost came out. These connectors are very very sensitive. So. 
be, be gentle. It's in there that doesn't plug in that far, it doesn't click or anything. So now once we have that in, just gently press this down. There you go. And now the USB. Again, this only plugs in one way. Red goes on the left if you're if you're curious. Done. Uh, now, when you put this back into your stick, you're just going to place it where the two holes are inside your VLX um, chassis, I guess you could say. There's a screw here, which is kind of hidden by the USB, but you can still get to it. Just kind of go at an angle. You don't need to screw it in super tight. And then there's this one here. So just save your screws, screw them in, close it up. And you're done. So any questions, you can email me. My uh, I have a contact on my website, vicomods.com. You can get this board uh, from, right now, you can get it from Arcade Shock. Um, you can get the entire kit, with uh, just like I did, from Jason directly. But you definitely cannot get it from Focus Attack. And I guess that's that. So see you again. Thanks for watching.